Value Entertainment presents The Good Humor Man, featuring Jack Carson in a scoop of trouble. An unsuspecting ice cream vendor's sweet life turns sour when he scoops up a femme fatale, leading to a frosty reception from the law, a gangland twist, and a chilly heist. Oh, thanks, lady. You don't know how much I appreciated that. Hello, Willie. Hello, Mr. Woodwoman Man. Well, what'll be today? Button. Nothing. I lost my money. You lost your money? Would you tell me the favors? I would rest love, dear, about the favors. You want to know what flavors I've got, huh? Well, in the good humors, I got vanilla, butter, pecan, chocolate, malt, date, and nut, honeydew, fresh banana ice cream with chocolate covering, or vanilla with toasted almond or coconut covering. Then in the cups, I got bittersweet chocolate, fresh strawberry, raspberry, fresh peach, and pineapple sherbet. Now, which one do you like best, Willie? The one in the middle. The one in the middle? Which one was that? Say them again. Again? Vanilla, butter, pecan, chocolate, malt, date, and nut, fresh banana ice cream with chocolate covering, vanilla with toasted almond or coconut covering, bittersweet chocolate, fresh strawberry, raspberry, fresh peach, and pineapple sherbet. You wouldn't say it that time. I didn't. Vanilla? Butter pecan? Chocolate malt. Date and nut? Honeydew? That's it, Honeywoo. Oh, Honeydew, that's the one you like best, eh, Willie? But I lost my money. You lost your money. Oh, it's too bad, Well, Maybe we can find it around here someplace. Let's look, huh? Yeah, there it is right behind us, see? My money, my money, oh, boy, you won my money. Thank you very much, Mr. Woodwoomer, man. Okay, one Honeydew coming up. Now I can go buy some candy. What happened? Lose your money, too? Okay, maybe next time.
That's right. Play it sweet just for her. Hey, good humor, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. May I serve you? Give me one of your good humors. Yes, sir. There you are. Thank you. In reply to your inquiry of the 20th instant, we'll say that in a few days the detail file will be on its way to you. Sign Stuart Nagel, Chief Investigator. Send that airmail, will you, Margie? Yes, sir. Oh, one more thing. What are you doing tonight? I'm sorry, Mr. Nagel, I'm busy. Again? This guy must be a combination of Don Juan and Casanova. Who is he? Will that be all, Mr. Nagel? Not quite. Margie, huh? Is it just a coincidence the good humor man plays that particular tune every day? Well, I really hadn't noticed, Mr. Nagel. That stupid looking jukebox on wheels couldn't be Casanova, could he? Or could he? You're slipping as a detective, Mr. Nagel. Oh? Am I? Oh, hiya, Margie. Gosh, you look beautiful. That's so loud. What? I said, hiya, Margie. Gosh, you look beautiful. I... Hey, what am I whispering about? You can't come up here to see me anymore. I can't? Why not? You like good humors, don't you? Oh, of course, I love and them. And you like the raspberry cups, don't you? Of course, I love them, and... but... You like me, don't you? Of course, I... Biff, this is hardly the place. Margie, I, I'd be crazy about you any place. Gee, sometimes I just sit in my truck and pull the sticks out of good humors. What? You know, she loves me, she loves me now, <laughs> she loves me, she... <laughs> Fine thing, I got enough sticks to build a house and you won't move in. Biff, listen to me. Mr. Nagel's getting suspicious. If he knew about us, he'd keep you out of this building altogether. You couldn't sell a thing here. I'd like to sell him a handful of knuckles. Please, Biff, don't get into any trouble. I have to go now. Hey, oh, why'd you wait a minute? I got something for you. What are you looking for? They're all alike. Yeah, but I got a friend at the factory. I had to make this especially for you. Oh, Biff. Well, I got to go sell the other offices now. <clears throat> Well, all ready for your date tonight, huh? Good night, Mr. Nagel. Allow me. Margie, why don't you ditch this guy? We can have a nice, quiet little dinner at my apartment. Then uh, you can show me your collection of fingerprints? Mm -hmm. Mm hmm You might get to like me if you knew me better. Coming right up, sir. There you are, sir. Me? I didn't order anything. Get that thing out of here. Oh, over oh, me. Now, look what you've done. Hold still, hold still. I'll get it. You don't want any tutti fruity in your eardrums, do you? There you are. I'm going to punch you right in the nose. That's a fine way to talk to a guy that just cleaned you up. I'd like to clean you up, but good. Mr. Nagel, what's wrong? Did you see that good humor man? Yes, he comes here every day. Well, I want him barred from this building, do you understand? Barred! Yes, Mr. Nagel, I'll see to it. Listen to me, please, Margie. Uh, I'll take a good humor. Oh, yes. There you are, sir. Be careful he doesn't shove it in your ear. He would? Uh, uh, no, never mind. Margie! You shouldn't have told a man that. And why not? You did it to Mr. Nagel, didn't you? Oh, well, that's different. I hate that guy. He makes more passes than Notre Dame. You don't have to worry about Mr. Nagel. He doesn't mean any harm. Well, why don't you quit, Margie? You know the job I've got lined up for you. But how can I get married, Biff? I've got my little brother to support. But I like Johnny. We're pals. Maybe later, when Johnny grows up. 
When Johnny grows up. Okay, I'll put in an order for a couple of wheelchairs. Biff, please. Let's just go along the way we are for a while. All right, Biff? Okay, but remember, I don't look my best in a wheelchair. Captain Marvel. Enter Neat Pack Leverum. Hi, Johnny. Hi, gang. Hi, Hi Liz. Everybody here, eh? Don't forget Captain Marvel gets those big muscles by eating good humors. <laughs> well, I'm so busy selling them, I don't get a chance to eat very many of them. We're still in session, Neat Pack. Oh, I'm sorry. Take your seat. Close our meeting with the pledge. <clears throat> oh. We, the members of the Captain Marvel Club, we, we the members of the, of the Captain, Captain Marvel, Marvel Club, Club, pledge ourselves to only do good, to help all people who are in trouble, to obey the laws of our country, county, and city, and to always make our parents proud of us. And always be nice to girls. No matter if they are women or not. We will now have the secret password, used for meetings and in times of distress. N-I-A-T-P-A-C-L-E-V-R-A-M. Lavram, Lavram, Lavram. Meeting's adjourned. Well. <laughs> let's go. Hey, let's go to the baseball game today. Let's see, you like vanilla, don't you, Ambrose? Sure do. I love doing you for it, Biff. Oh, that's okay. I have to eat too, Biff. All right. Put down the cup for me, Biff. Mm hmm. Now, your 50 cents. Uh, put it on dry ice for me, Biff. That's where I keep it. Thanks, Biff. Mm hmm. You know, I got a bigger stake in those kids than their parents have, Johnny. I'll buy one, Biff. No, no, forget. It. I don't want to break my winning streak. I'll treat you. I'll even throw in an engagement ring. Brand new, never been used. Oh, you're not giving up with Margie, are you, Biff? No, but I'll be sure to be glad when you start shaving. Let me know when you feel a little fuzz, will you? Sure will, Biff. I'm in there pitching for you. Every time Mr. Nagel comes around the house, I try to cross him up. The other night, I put my bubble gum on his chair. You don't think she's getting stuck on him, do you, Johnny? Ah, oh, you know women, Biff. She thinks he's a big, important detective. Yeah. I'm nothing but a great, big, important, tutti-frutti salesman. Why don't you come over tonight, Biff? I'll leave you and Margie alone. Maybe you can talk her into it. I'll take the fuses out and short-circuit the lights, so it'll be nice and dark. Yeah, maybe if it's dark enough, she won't know it's me. Okay, it's a deal. Neat pack Lebrum. Neat pack Lebrum. Oh, and bring roses, Biff. Margie likes those roses with the long stems. All right, I'll be over as soon as I finish my route. I'll take care of the long roses. You take care of the short circuits. yourself? I got a date. I don't, I don't want to get messed up. I can't leave this furnace. Bring it over and hurry up. Yes, sir. One strawberry good humor coming right up. Barbecue himself. 
on top of it, so it can't melt. It's nice and cool, see? You wouldn't want it unless you go for Vaseline flavor. See? I was just protecting it from the heat. Why, you... Fresh dry out. Put your nose on the top of your head. to the hydrant. Where's the driver? We haven't seen him, Inspector, but he ought to be coming along soon. I'm crazy about good humors. <laughs> I'll pay him when he gets here. Why didn't you men look inside? Hurry up, get him out of there. Coffee or some brandy. And a hammer and hurry. Let him build a fire, no time to lose. Take off your coats, wrap him up.
right, Jones. Get on with it. Well, Inspector, I... I'm sorry, Inspector. Where's that hot coffee? It's coming right up, Inspector. Drink that coffee, Jones. Yes. Uh. I'm sorry, Inspector. Forget it. Go on with your story. That's all I know, Inspector. She ran away. They socked me on the chin. Next thing, I was in that freezer where you found me. And you never saw this woman before? Huh. Would you recognize her if you saw her again? I don't know. I just got one quick look at her. She, uh, she was blonde, had soft, curly hair, blue eyes with real long lashes, beautiful red lips, soft, dreamy voice, swell pair of legs, great shape, cute but cuddly, and weighed about 115 pounds. <laughs> Just a quick look, huh? Well, what kind of clothes was she wearing? Clothes? Well, she had... Uh, she... Well, I don't exactly remember, Inspector. She was wearing clothes, wasn't she? Well, yeah, it's just that I don't pay much attention to women's clothes. Yeah, you're too busy paying attention to other things, aren't you? X-ray eyes. X-ray eyes? You'd make a great undercover man, Jones, but when it comes to covering up, you do a bad job. Well, I'm not covering anything. I... <laughs> Maybe you'd better. Even with soft, curly hair, you wouldn't look so good. What are you getting at? You're making it sound like I'm not telling the truth. Maybe she wore a new dress tonight, one you've never seen before. Maybe that's why you don't remember. How do I know that she wore a new dress tonight? I told you I never saw her or her dress before. What were these flowers doing in the back of your truck? Oh, I bought these for my girl. I, yeah, I gotta get going. I got a date with her tonight. Another date? You sure get around, don't you? Well, tell us about this one. Well, this is my only date. This is the girl I hope to marry. Oh, you don't want to marry Blue Eyes, huh? Well, no. Why not? Because she's married already? Maybe her husband caught you two together tonight. Maybe he beat you up and put you where you'd cool off for a while. How do I know that she's married to one of those guys? She said they were trying to kill her. Yeah, because she's been running around with you. How do you get all your women, Jones? Do you slip in good humors on the side, or is it the roses that do the trick? Now, wait a minute. I... I... Good as soon time. Thank you. I... I'm sorry, Inspector. Jones? Oh, yes, Mr. Lavery. Mr. Jones, this morning I had a report that you have been barred from the Peerless Insurance Company building. You might be interested in knowing that Mr. Nagel still has an earache. I, I'm sorry, sir. I was also informed the police picked you up last night. Oh, yeah, well, I can explain that, Mr. Lavery. Not to me, Jones. You'll leave me no alternative. You will be through on Saturday. Through? You mean I have to... I have to turn in my chimes? Exactly that, Mr. Jones. No, Biff didn't tell us to pick it. When he heard he was fired, we decided to do something about it. We don't want Biff to go. Gosh, good humors won't taste the same without Biff. Good humors were being made long before Mr. Jones was with the company. They tasted the same then, they taste the same now. Only better, young man. You won't prove it by me. I'll never eat another one. None of the other kids will either. Do you hear that? This thing can spread, ruin this entire company. And when I have children, I won't let them eat any either. Good day, gentlemen. Well, we thought we were helping Biff, Margie. He only made things worse. There's Biff. Here, you hurry inside. I'll, I'll try to explain things to him. Okay, Marky. Hi, Margie. Biff, I've got something to tell you. Oh, as usual, I can tell it isn't good news. Far from it. Today, Johnny collected all the boys. They went down and picketed the Good Humor Factory, and the police had to come and break it up. You mean Johnny and the kid tried to get my job back? Gee. Imagine them thinking enough of me to do that for me. Gosh, Marge, I've never been so happy in my life. I, I guess Johnny does really kind of like me, huh? Oh, he does, Biff. I, I guess it runs in the family. Well, I like Johnny, too. Margie. You, too? I've been thinking things over. Maybe three can live as cheaply as one. Gosh, Marge, I, I'll do my best to see that you and Johnny are both very happy. You wait and see. 
Now that I know that you and Johnny are both behind me, I'll, I'll sell so many good humors tonight, they couldn't afford to fire me. <laughs> Captain Marvel rides again. Good luck, Captain. I'm sorry. I don't want anyone to see me from the outside. Well, Reven, I can't even see you from the inside. You know, it's kind of... Hey. You're that woman. Last night. Yes, and thanks to you, I got away from them. Well, thanks to you, I didn't. I'm sorry I got you into that. But there wasn't anything else I could do. Well... What are you doing here? I rented this place today. I had to go someplace where I could hide. I've been running so long, I haven't slept in days. I can't go on any further. I just can't. You know those men are dangerous. You saw them. Yeah. I was watching out the window, and when I saw you go by, I, I had to call you. I didn't know who else to turn to. Oh, my gosh, what can I do? You can spend the night here with me. <laughs> Please, just tonight to keep watch over me. If I get one night's sleep, I'll have strength enough to go on. Say you will. Lady, I... I got a lot of good humors to sell tonight. I... I'll buy them all from you. I'll pay you. I'll do anything if you stay. You, you'll buy them? Yes. All of them? Oh, yes. Gee, then I get my job back for sure. I... Well... Okay, I, I'll do it. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I... I think you've thanked me enough. I... Say, who are those guys, anyway? The tall one. He's my husband. He hates me. He always has. <laughs> No wonder you didn't give him enough air. I... I'll take my stuff to the factory. I'll be back with my pajamas. No, please don't leave me. Well, I can't wrinkle my uniform. It's a company rule. You gotta be neat at all times. You can wear something of mine. Something of yours? <laughs> Jim, I'll catch an awful cold. Come on. Come in. Now, if you laugh at me, I'm leaving. Remember, this was your idea. I wouldn't do that for the world. I'll go to bed now, and you make sure that everything's locked up. I'll do even better than that. <laughs> Captain Marvel once was in a situation just like this. The villains were after him. He had to hide out. So he fixed it so that nobody or nothing could get in or get out, you see? First, he took the sheet at... Oh, no, no, no. First, he nailed up all the windows. Then he took the sheet and stuffed it under the door in case anybody tried to force poison gas through the crack. Then, to make real sure, he sprinkled flour all over the floor. Flour? What for? Well, that's in case if anybody did get in, they'd leave their footprints in the flour. I feel so safe with you. Yeah, well, to make double sure, I'll, I'll tie a string between us so in case you move, I'll wake up. Don't you worry, nobody's gonna get in here. <laughs> I get in myself. Truck. What would Biff be doing out this early in the morning? 
can't be this. Those checks all look alike. Lady, what are you sleeping there for? If I'd known you wanted to do that, I'd have taken the bed myself. I, I didn't. I... Hey, lady, wake up. You can't be. You can't do this to me. You can't be dead. It's impossible. How can anybody get in here without my hearing them? But somebody did get in here. yourself. What would Captain Marvel do in a situation like this? This is the time for cool, clear thinking. Control yourself. Let your brain take over. You looked at the windows carefully. You tried the doors. No one could have gotten in through the doors or the windows. Did you see any footprints other than yours and hers? Then we know for sure no one was here last night except you and that girl. But still, she's dead. No pulse, no heartbeat. She's been strangled. The marks are still around her neck. OK, Captain Marvel, now put two and two together. Who is the only person who could have killed her? You! Of course, who else? You did it in your sleep in the middle of the night. You pulled her out of bed. She put up a fight, but you were too strong. You dragged her in here and choked her to death. With those two hands, you're a Jekyll and Hyde. By day, you sell ice cream to children. At night, you murder beautiful women. But you can't get away with it. They'll catch you, and you'll hang. It's the police. They're here already. They've come to get you. Goodbye, Biff. It's been nice knowing you. Am I glad to see you? Come on in. What's happened to you? Plenty. Well, what in the world are you doing here? Oh. Oh, she's dead. Dead drunk. Oh, Margie, come on in. You gotta help me. You seem to have done all right without my help. Well, Margie, it's not what you think. You can ask her. Or no, you can't, but Margie, I can explain everything. She said she'd buy all my ice cream if I spent the night with her. I, I mean, if I watched over. I mean to see that no one got in the house, so I spent the night guarding her. Margie, you got to listen to me. You can't let me down now. I'm, I'm in terrible trouble. You certainly are. If you ever come anywhere near Johnny or me again, I'll have you thrown in jail. Margie! Margie!
boy. Am I glad to see you. Yeah, we're glad to see you, too. But not that much of you. You gotta come in that house with me. I've just done something terrible. I'll just bet you snagged your nylons, didn't you, dearie? Hey. Cut that out. We know where they're having a bargain sale on girdles. Get in. Uh, well, fellas, you don't understand. I did it. I, I just did something terrible. Stick around the web, you know, and we'll open up a job. You gotta <laughs> hit me, Sean, dearie. Oh, all right, sweetie. Cut around the web. I figured he'd feel more at home here in the sorority. <laughs> Inspector, get me out of here quick, will you? Don't you want to stay in place, spin the bottle, dear? <laughs> Give him a peanut! Inspector, get me out of here, please, quick! Get me out! Thanks for stopping by and getting my clothes, Inspector. Gee, I, I sure wouldn't want to be hung in this. I like the idea of hanging a Jones, but inciting children to pick it isn't a crime. Yeah, but you got your crime now, Inspector. I told you, I killed someone. Yeah, sure. You beat him to death with a good humor. No, no, it was a woman. I strangled her last night in my sleep. The same woman I told you about. I. Hey. There's the house. If this is a gag, Jones, I won't think it's funny. It's no gag. I'm not laughing either. Keep him company. Come on, Road. Oh, I can't go in there. Don't make me. Please don't make me. Come on. Bring him in. Oh, now you see what I've done. Take me away. I'm a murderer. I killed her with my own hands. Oh, why did I do it? Why did I do it? That's what we want to know. What kind of racket is this? Oh. What are you trying to pull? Stop this phony routine, Joe. Where is she? You tell us. Well, she was right there. She was dead. How do you know she was dead? She didn't talk. And when a woman doesn't talk, she's got to be dead. Besides that, I felt her pulse. Sometimes a pulse is so faint you can't feel it. Her heart wasn't beating either. She's got to be here somewhere. She couldn't just walk away. She... Hey. Somebody took all the boards off the window. I had them all boarded up. Maybe the night air killed her. Oh, no, I tell you, I did it. I... Wait a minute. Hey, look. Somebody made the bed. Cut out that double talk and start talking straight. And the flower's all off the floor. There's no flour in here, either. What would flowers be doing on the floor? Oh, no, not, not flowers. Flour, the kind you make a cake with. I, I put it there. I know. She ate your cake and died of a tummy ache. No, I sprinkled it all over like Captain Marvel did. Who's Captain Marvel? Yeah, Captain Marvel in the comic books. You read comic books? Of course I do. Everybody does. <laughs> I'm not crazy, either. I guess I know what happened last night. Inspector, you got to believe me. The woman who was running away from those men was living in this house. She called me in and asked me to protect her again. What's going on here? Who are you? Elmer Darby, Darby Realty Company. I'm the rental agent for this house. Who was the last tenant here? Family named Winkle Blotz. They moved out, left the place in terrible condition. He's talking about that woman who was living here last night. Living here? Why, well, this house hasn't been occupied in over three months. Well, she was right here in this room. She was, she was very pretty and she was about this size. You're mistaken. No woman was here. Besides, I only just rented the house today. But I was here with this woman myself last night. I don't know who you are, young man, but there's been nobody in this house. Besides that, I passed by last night. I saw no lights. Well, she didn't turn on the lights. She said she was afraid of being seen from the street. She couldn't have. See, the lights have been turned off for months. There are no lights. Inspector, it's true. I. Hey, last night when you passed by, you must have seen my truck parked out in front. Your truck? That good humor truck. There wasn't any truck there last night. There had to be. I left it there. I beg your pardon. I should know. I was walking my dog, and we paused for a few moments right outside by the curb. There was no truck there. And none of you gentlemen are through. I'd like to bring my people in. They're newlyweds and very anxious to start housekeeping. All right, all right, we're leaving. I hope so. I don't want this property to get a bad name. I'll give you one hour to get out of town. If I ever see you again, there'll be a hanging. They'll be hanging me for hanging you. What is it, Sonny? I want to see my sister, Margie Ballou. 
Margie? Oh, she went out on a case with Mr. Nagel. They've gone over to the Lackford industrial plant. Thanks. Thanks a lot. How is he? He hasn't a chance. What are you going to do about this, Quint? Do you realize that our company stands to cover the entire loss? $300,000. But how could it happen? The gates are guarded 24 hours a day. No one's allowed to enter the plant without the proper credentials. But someone did get in, Mr. Lackford. Last night, someone entered this room, attacked your paymaster, and made off with a safe weighing hundreds of pounds. Do your guards keep a list of everyone who enters and leaves? Why, of course, and also the time they go through the gates. Miss Ballou, get that list. We'll start from there. Yes, Inspector. This is the time in, and that's the time out. Is there anything wrong, miss? No. No, nothing. Margie! Margie! Johnny! Ah, uh, just a moment, son. I've got to see my sister. It's all right, officer. What is it, Johnny? Biff's taking the train. He's leaving town. Margie, we can't let Biff go away. Leaving town? When did you see him? A little while ago. He came by the clubhouse. What's wrong, Margie? I'm not sure. You get to the station. Take Biff back to the clubhouse and tell him to wait there till I arrive. Under no circumstances is he to leave. Can you remember that, Johnny? Sure, I'll bring him back. And hurry, Johnny. Everything depends on you. Don't worry, I'll get him. There's only one chance in a thousand. No, one chance in a million. Will Captain Marvel get there in time? He has to hurry. Next week we shall see. And that brings to a close our Captain Marvel adventure for tonight. And now for the latest news. Hey, Johnny, you're sure you don't know why Margie wanted me to come down here? She just said for me to bring you. Last night, the Lackford Industrial Plant was robbed. J.C. Watkins, the paymaster, was attacked and beaten. Watkins? He used to buy ice cream from me. Watkins died without ever regaining consciousness. Principal suspect in the case is Biff Jones, a good humor man. Company records show he entered the Lackford Plant at 11 o'clock last night, the time the police have fixed for the killing and the robbery. Me? I didn't go near there last night. Inspector Quint of Homicide has taken over the case and expects to have Jones in custody within the hour. Johnny! Johnny! It's Margie! Oh, thank goodness you're here. Johnny, go out and keep your eyes open. If anyone comes, warn us. Okay, Margie. Hey, what's going on, Margie? They think I killed Watkins at the Lackford plant. I know, Biff, but I also knew that you couldn't have been there if you were with that woman all night. Say, Margie, you're, you're not sorry me about that woman anymore, are you? No, Biff. I was just jealous for a little while. I know there couldn't have been anything between you. Gee, I'm sure glad you believe me. Biff, we must find that woman's body. She's your only proof that you weren't at the Lackford plant last night. But how? I don't know where she's gone. I don't know who took her away. There's no trace. What? Her nightgown. The one I had on. It might have a laundry mark on it. We could trace her that way. Come on. Those newlyweds must be out. I'll find a way to sneak in, get the night gun to be right out. Be careful, Biff. Oh, sure. you've done. 
Alan, you let me smell your breath this instant. Do you hear? I, I'll smash down the door. One, two. Let me smell. <sighs> Boobykins is so sorry she didn't trust Sweetiekins. Kiss me to prove you're not mad at Boobykins. But where's my Sweetiekins mustache? I miss my little tickle. him not to drink. Come on. Yeah, this is our mark, all right. After trying every laundry in town. You know, funny thing, a man was in here before. He wanted to know if anyone had been inquiring about the laundry mark on a nightgown. Must be this one. Oh, here we are. A man? Who was he? Oh, sad-looking guy like an undertaker. There he is, coming back. Hey, quick, what's the name? Bunny Conroy, apartment 361 Park Royal Hotel. Why, the very idea, charging 10 cents for each diaper. <laughs> it's all your fault. I told you we should stop after we had nine children. You and your even dozen. I don't like his looks. He's creepy. I wouldn't want him creeping over me. Hey, you. Sorry. Got to round up 12 babysitters. <laughs> Where is the hotel? Be careful. You want him to hear you? Yeah. Oh! Hey! My shoe! Where's my shoe? shoe? My shoe? Why, officer, that's ridiculous. If it was mine, I'd be wearing it. <laughs> hey! 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 By the time I recognized him as that good humor guy you wanted, he and the girl got away from me. Well, cover the neighborhood, boys. He can't get far on one shoe. Come on. Uh, I've stepped in every cigar butt, pebble, and bottle top in this city. You don't carry a spare shoe, do you? Well, look in your purse. Women carry everything in there. Biff, come on. We have to hurry. Yeah, but my... <clears throat>
Let's see if we can get in by the fire escape. Scared to go in there? You want to change places? No, I'll go with you. <laughs> go ahead. No, no, you go first. <laughs> I got a nickel. We'll call from downstairs. No, no. There must be a phone up here somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. We ain't gonna be here long. Yeah, I know. Get the money. Beautiful. As soon as we cut up this dough, we'll be back and take care of it. All right, let's go. Wait a minute. You smell something burning? Oh, it's those ropes he smokes. <laughs> I won't be smoking these ropes when I get my cut of that 300 grand. Haircut. Did you hear them mention $300,000? That's the amount stolen from the Lackford plant. Yeah. And those are the same three guys that she was running away from. Call Quint. Yeah. Hello. Get me Inspector Quint of the Homicide Borough. Quick, operator. Let's see now. Those three guys were after her. So she gets me to protect her, and the next morning she's dead. Now we find out they got $300,000. So they must be the guys that killed Mr. Watkins and robbed the Lackford plant. Yeah, uh, uh, hello, uh, uh, Inspector Quint, please. He's not in. Yeah, well, I gotta talk to him. This is Biff Jones. Biff Jones? Hold on a minute. I'll connect you through our mobile transmitter. Well, make it fast. But Quint thinks I robbed the plant. It's all tied together somehow. You suppose she's into this thing? Maybe she's part of the gang. Maybe all that stuff about the three guys chasing her was all an act. No, if she were part of the gang, why would they kill her and bring her here? Well, maybe they didn't want her hanging around anymore. <laughs> What is it, Biff? She's gone! Oh, no, that's impossible. I wouldn't say that. You see, Mr. Jones, I'm still hanging around. Calling Inspector Quint. Calling Inspector Quint. 
Quint speaking. Go ahead, Sergeant. Hello, Inspector. I've got Biff Jones on the phone. He wants to talk to you. Well, put him on. <coughs> Hello. Hello, Jones. This is Quint. Hello. Drop that phone. Well, I... I, I said drop it. Hello, Jones. It's dropped. Hello. Hello, Jones. Sergeant, trace that call. You were saying I was part of the gang. Nice deducing, but a bit too late. But you're dead. I, I felt you myself. Please, Mr. Jones. There are ladies present. Well, I'm certainly glad she's present to see that you're alive. You know, I thought I killed you. Well, what a relief to know I'm not a murderer. You can take that happy thought with you. Okay, we're just going anyway. <laughs> Guess we'll stick around for a while. I'm sure of that. Be ashamed to ruin our plan now. Then Biff was right. You are in with those three men who robbed the Lackford plant. Perfect, wasn't it? I took an empty house on his route. While he protected me, they took his truck. And the uniform you so cheerfully donated, I gave to the boys through the window. Of course. One of them wore my uniform. They drove right into the plant. The guys were so used to seeing me come in there every night to sell Mr. Watkins, they didn't pay any attention to them. They thought it was me. Our research was very thorough. We even knew the safe would just fit in your truck. Everything but my being dead. Yeah, but you gotta be dead. Dead. I mean, you ought to be. Uh, your heart wasn't beating. No, I was just going through. Just in time, Stephen. Well, how are all your children? Fine, considering they're going to be orphans. What a shame you got so nosy about that nightgown. Well, that's all right. I probably won't have any more use for it anyway. Such a lovely nightgown, too. Mm. I wonder if it would fit Stephen as well as it fits you, Biff. I'll try it on sometime. Why wait? talk to you. He's gone to Stuart Nagel's office over in the Peerless Insurance building. Thanks. I'll call him there. Where is Quint? Peerless Insurance. Fine time to take a policy out. Hello, Mr. Nagel? Hello, Margie. What is it? Has Inspector Quint arrived yet? I must talk to him, please. Inspector Quint? Well, he's rather busy right now, Margie. I'll be glad to take a message. But tell him Biff Jones and I discovered who robbed the Lackford plant. We know who the men are. Also, that a woman called Bonnie Conroy helped them frame Biff. Miss Ballou, allow me to congratulate you. I'm sure that's exactly what happened. This Bonnie Conroy decoyed Jones. So that these three men, whose descriptions you have so well, took his truck and robbed the Lackford plant. Well, here's what you must do, Margie. You must get Biff Jones to a safe place immediately so that he can hide out. These men are sure to be after him. I know just the place, Mr. Nagel. It's my brother's clubhouse right next to the public school on 3rd Street. That's fine, Margie. That's fine. You take Biff Jones to your brother's clubhouse next to the school on 3rd Street. And don't you tell a soul where you're going. I'll handle everything from here in. Everything. Quint's on his way up. I'll take care of this money. You go down to the clubhouse and get that guy. Go out the back way. Now, Mr. Nagel, take care of everything. I hope so, but I can't see that guy doing me any favors. What is it, Biff? I got 
Jack, some new club members. Who are they? Those three guys. Come on, help me. Oh, Mr. Nagel knew we were coming here. I told you he wouldn't do me any favors. Hey, he must be in with them. Let's get out of here. Bowser. 
Tracy's call to this room. I don't know what you're talking about. I told you a man broke in, tied us up, and robbed us. Oh, he did, huh? I was certain you were the dead woman Jones told us about. Now you start talking. Well, I... Keep quiet. What's the use? They'll find out sooner or later. You're right. I tricked Jones into spending the night with me to get his truck. But that night something happened we didn't figure on. I had an attack. It's an illness I've had for a long time. Oh, symptomatic epilepsy? Yes. I had another one tonight. That's why Jones thought she was dead. Yeah, symptomatic epilepsy. Hardly any pulse or heartbeat. Only a doctor would know she wasn't dead. Well, uh, what about your throat, those finger marks? I'm undergoing treatment. Combination of my tender skin and the rough hands on my new masseuse. Yeah, take good care of that skin of hers and his, too. Well, you'd better pick up Stuart Nagel. He's the boss. He planned the whole thing. We'll get him. He got out of his office just a minute before we got there. <laughs> Inspector, something screwy is happening. Every mother and father in town is phoning the station. Some kid, Johnny Blue, has taken all our kids away. Johnny Blue? Well, that's Marjorie Blue's brother. Even the mayor's kid is gone. The mayor's blowing his top. Why not? They're all potential voters, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> uh, bring them along. <laughs>
sale. They're in here somewhere. Mr. Nagel! So you're mixed up with these crowds? Big house. All right, get him out of here. Hey, cut it out, will you? you? Got the wrong guy. Leave him alone, you big flag. Hey, get up, will you? I'll see that you get guilty. Good humors for life. Alfalfa flavor. Move over. Give a girl a chance. <laughs> My good humor, man. <laughs> 